Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I am the pixelated incarnation of some guy. And I'm here today to carry on with the over-analysis of a golden wake. To get you up to speed, Alfie's still a real estate savant. And historically terrible hurricane has just struck the greater Miami area. Devastating it. Look, here's a picture of the time period. Yeah, they don't look nice. Gentlemen, thank you for meeting me here. I realize this hurricane has dealt a significant blow to our operations. But don't be alarmed. Yeah, you're totally right, Merrick. Don't let anything like a little hurricane, otherwise known as a Greater Miami Hurricane, you know, the most costliest hurricane in American history when adjusted for inflation, get in the way of your operations, man. It's not like over 100 people died in the Greater Miami area alone, or that there was looting, martial law had to be declared, the Red Cross had to come in and establish soup kitchens, and the vast majority of the city was devastated by this really historic and significant natural disaster. No, 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 no. You keep selling houses for the city beautiful because you're a determined son of a gun. Alfie, before you go, could I speak with you a moment? I need a rather large favor from you. You don't say. What might that be? Now, Alfie's all emo now. Or maybe he's just traumatized from surviving a hurricane. I've heard stories of illicit gambling and alcohol being served somewhere in the hotel. I would appreciate it if you could investigate and report back to me. Now, there's a few things we know about Mr. Alfie Banks. One, he's really good at selling houses. And two, he white bread as hell. Now, Merrick, what about Alfie makes you think that he's going to be good at finding gambling and mobsters in a hotel? Seriously, this dude says horse feathers and he's your go-to guy for a criminal investigation? Now, I get all the cops are probably busy with the whole natural disaster, but seriously, you couldn't have hired a PI or, you know, someone with some street smarts? Yeah, who is it? Well, damn. Well, I guess I was wrong about Alfie. He can find where smooth jazz is playing in a room and where stereotypical mobster's voice answers the door. I guess he'll be a PI after all. I should probably make it all... But there we go, it's black and white now. Now we're playing a hard-boiled PI game. Yeah, it's Al Capone, see? You better let me in or there's gonna be trouble. Okay, Alfie, yeah, I, I'm not gonna buy the P.I. thing anymore. You tried, honey, you tried. But yeah, despite Alfie's excellent impression, he can't get into the party. He needs to uncover the password to get in. And to uncover the password, all he needs to do is sit down on the sofa and overhear two mobsters conveniently talking loud enough about the password to the party. Then Alfie gets in. It's that easy. Now that's a 1920s party if I've ever heard or seen one. I've never seen either. And yeah, Alfie's here at this banging party sticking out like a sore thumb. But he still needs to find the mob boss. Because, well, he does anything for Merrick. And the problem is, the old mob boss, he's not here at the party. Mingling with the party goers. No, he's hidden away in his secret office. That's opened by, well, adjusting some books. Because don't you have a lock that works like that in your house? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you folks. Pretty much everything that happens after this point in the game, it kind of lost me a little bit. It gets a little strange and, well, let's just watch Alfie talk to a mob boss and I'll explain as the strangeness arises. Well, well, who do we have here? I'm Alfred Banks. You must be fatty. Now, now, let's not start things off on the wrong foot. It's Mr. Walsh. Until I say otherwise, Savvy. Now, Alfie nicely asked the mobster to stop being, well, a mobster and doing those mobstery things. Naturally, the mobster says, no, I'm not gonna do that. It's kind of my thing. So Alfie, distraught over the fact that he can't stop a mobster from mobstering, gets a rather interesting offer from the head of a notorious criminal organization. And yes, this was a real dude. I'm offering you an opportunity to leave behind your current employer and find more lucrative prospects with my organization. I could use a guy like you. A guy I know can get things done. Well, yeah, if you want to sell a house or something or put together a promotion to sell houses, yeah, Alfie's totally your dude, but for mobster stuff, Mr. Mobster? Now, I'm not trying to question your judgment, but I'm kind of questioning your judgment. Now, I've been playing as Alfie for this entire game, and trust me when I say this, Alfie will break under any interrogation, and he will turn rat quicker than you can look at him. I mean, the man wouldn't even stand up for himself when his two former buddies in New York cost him his job. You really think he's criminal material? I mean, maybe as a front man, maybe... Maybe, but you gotta keep an eye. No, Fatty, are you desperate for manpower? Uh huh. Just take a little time to think things over. If you change your mind, come back and see me. I'll be here. 
So, as I mentioned earlier in this video, Alfie's going a bit emo. You see, he's mad that he didn't get to become mayor. Like, I'm serious. That's seriously like a big motivation for this character. He pissed off. He wasn't a mayor for some reason. Working for George hasn't really gotten that bad, has it? Sure, I didn't get to be mayor, but there's always the next term, right? So Alfie spends this scene walking around and kind of hyping himself up to join the mob, despite knowing as much about the mob as my cat. Now I get Alfie's going through some sort of complicated relationship thing with Merrick, who's become like his surrogate father or some strange stuff like that. And Alfie's all mad at him because he didn't make a mayor. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that Alfie's a bit emotionally vulnerable right now. And he shouldn't be making any rash decisions like, you know, joining the mob. Well, would you look at what the cat dragged in. Alfie, you're back. I was just having a talk with Mayor Dammers about this whole situation. I said if anyone can smoke out the undesirables in my fair city, it's Alfie Banks. <laughs> all right. And also, too, this level of collusion between the land developer and the mayor kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. It's like, they're the mob, but legal. No, I didn't. I don't think there's actually anything shady going on at the Biltmore. Everything seemed fine. I see. Well, I appreciate the effort, Alfie. Now, ultimately, it doesn't matter what decision you make there, because Alfie's going to do what Alfie's going to do. Now, you see, Merrick done messed up. He should have never have let Mr. Dammers in that room, because that reminded Alfie that he should have been mayor for some reason that I'm not fully aware of. So, yeah, Alfie totally joins the mob. <laughs> I know. I've decided to take you up on your offer. I'm through being an errand boy for those ungrateful grifters. And now, Alfie becomes an errand boy for the mob. Again, <laughs> really game? Really, white bread Alfie just suddenly ups and joins the mob. Now I could get a gradual transformation. Maybe he gets involved in some murky housing deals that gets him tied up in a complicated web that involves mobsters and having to sell his soul to make a buck, but no, it's just straight up he mad that he was a mayor. Now he's a mobster. Okay, we're going with it. So Alfie's first job as a mobster is to go try to see if a bakery is a front. But do you really think Alfie's ever been to a speakeasy before? Seriously, what makes him uniquely qualified for this task? Oh well, here's what happens. I came here because I was asked to see if there was a speakeasy operating here. A speakeasy? Here? Oh, oh. I know, I told you you'd laugh. Yeah, Alfie's a smooth operator. He just straight up asked the lady. And well, she has a little present for him. What the? So Fatty sent you to move in on our operation, did he? Well, he's not gonna take over here if I've got anything to say about it. Now, I'm gonna give you to the count of ten to get your ugly, yellow, no good keister out of my bakery before I pump your guts full of lead. Yeah, Alfie hasn't even been a mobster for 30 minutes and Grandma's got a Tommy gun in his face. He's pretty aft. Ah, he gets out of it. Yeah, our protagonist won't die that way. So Alfie tells his new boss, Mr. Fatty, what went down at the bakery, likely giving all the other mobsters a good laugh considering the new guy got stuck up by a grandma. But whatever. Apparently that's good work in Fatty's world because he's got three. Yeah, the rule of three applies yet again. Quests for Alfie to do. But this time he gets some dashing mobster guy who actually, well, has probably killed some people to help him out. Likely because, again, the whole grandma incident's gonna be hard to live down. So anyway, his first quest involves, of all people, Alfie catching up with his brother. <gasps> I know, it's like all the plot threads are kind of getting tied up. It's like we're almost over halfway done with this game. I'd like to speak to the owner. Is he in? He's in the back, but he's really busy. I'm sure he is, but it's rather urgent that I speak to him. Like I said, he's busy. Tell him his brother Alfie needs to talk to him. Now. Well, this just got interesting. Okay, just give me a minute. I'll go get him. What's this about? Good to see you too, Bo. Oh, don't give me that baloney. How many times have I seen you in the past four years? Two? Three? I know you're a fancy real estate big shot now, but you could at least have the common courtesy to keep in touch with your own brother. So yeah, Alfie tells his brother what's up. Fatty apparently sold booze to the old diner owner. And yeah, Alfie 
is doing a bit of a heel turn now. It's kind of striking and out of left field. Level with me. Why have you been avoiding me all this time? Because it kills me to see you succeed. What? All your life you've just sat around being babied. Well, I've had to bust my hump to take care of you and mother since father died. Then all of a sudden you decide to ride my coattails and come down here? I thought you'd be proud of me for showing some initiative. You came down here, lazed around, spending mother's money for a few years, then bought a diner. Am I meant to be impressed? Damn! Alfie's cold now! Just right for the throat there. I mean, we met Bo once and he seemed okay. He helped us steal that part for the plane, but yeah, Alfie don't like him. Again, this is like a really sudden turn. Alfie's like saying... Fuck it, basically. He's burying all his bridges. In fact, he's burying bridges with characters who I don't really know anything about, like this dude. Apparently, he and Alfie work together, but Alfie's going to bust his balls over some alcohol debt. Because, you know, that was a thing during Prohibition. Like, you didn't owe money to your drug dealer, you owe money to your booze dealer. So, yeah, Alfie succeeds with that and breaks this poor man and gets money for fatty. I mean, yeah, Alfie's just cruel now. Maybe... He was just harboring all of this for years, all this resentment, all this tension just built up inside of it. And then the moment he could just do something bad, he just seized it. Whew. Well, okay, we still gotta collect some money from the pharmacist who's, yeah, he's now running in the back alley because, yeah, he doesn't want to pay. But Alfie succeeds. Was that really necessary? Fine! Fine, tell Fatty I'll get him his money. So Alfie's just spent the afternoon living the thug life. And now he's making his way back to the hotel where, guess who he runs into? I have to say, that went smoother than I'd expected. You're not a bad partner, Butch. Thanks. You ain't so bad yourself. Alfie, there you are. Thank goodness I found you. Maybe you can help me understand what's going on. I've just spoken with Mr. Freedy at the administration office, and he told me that you and another man had harassed him. Why on earth would he say such a thing? I know it goes right from mobster bonding and Alfie making new friends to his surrogate father confronting him. I suppose now is as good a time as any to tell you I quit. What? I've gained new employment by way of Fatty Walsh. Now, I don't claim to be an expert on mobstering, but I think a little bit of discretion would be good for Alfie here. Because, you know, won't the police be interested in this new white bread boy who's associated with known criminals? Just saying, a, a subtle hand and all that. You can't be serious. As a heart attack, George. But I don't understand. Why? Weren't you happy working for me? Happy? Happy? How can you even ask that? Now, one can almost see what Alfie's doing as an interesting and compelling insight into a very familiar trope, the one where the protagonist is essentially the little bitch, for lack of a better word, for some other main character. You're always doing fetch quests for this guy. You're always doing this. You're always doing that. Well, Alfie is aware of it, and he has had enough of it. He ain't gonna be nobody's little bitch anymore. He's gone rogue. Well, he's gonna be the mob's little bitch, but the point still remains. You've never appreciated anything I've done. Now, Alfie, you know that isn't true. I looked up to you, George. The day you hired me on the Coral Gables project was one of the best I can remember. I did everything I could to help it succeed, bent over backwards to get where we are today. Yeah, you go, Alfie. You tell him what's up. I mean, think about it. This whole game, Alfie's been the errand boy for Merrick, and what has it got him other than a green card and maybe some commission? And how do you repay me? By making that two-bit snake oil salesman, Dammers, mayor instead of me. Am I the only one that doesn't really buy into this whole mayor thing? Now, I could buy it if earlier on in the game it was hinted at or implied in some way that Alfie would be mayor. But it really wasn't. Alfie was asked to find someone to speak at the announcement of the whole mayor thing. He wasn't asked to be mayor. You think? Again, they would have told him there and then. So I have no idea why he has this weird expectation that he should become mayor. Especially when there's so many other legitimate criticisms... He he could have leveled against Merrick, but now nah, he's still harping on the whole damn mayor thing. You know what, Alfie? If you wanted to be mayor so bad, just run for public office. They have to have democracy in this city, right? I mean, join the mob, not the solution. In fact, that's probably going to hurt your political career. First you want to be elected, then you want to join the mob. You're doing it backwards, Alfie. But uh, whatever. Alfie tells Merrick off, and then he says this about his new boss, which is alarmingly silly. Alfie, listen. No, I'm through listening. I'm through running around like a chicken with its head cut off, and I'm through with you. 
When I came down here, my goal was to succeed like my father. Well, I can tell you right now, I've not only succeeded, I've surpassed anything he ever did. And I intend to surpass even the great George Merrick. So, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to report back to a boss who actually appreciates my hard work and doesn't just string me along like some floozy. Uh, okay, Alfie. Considering your new boss almost got you killed the first time you did a job for him, whatever. But hey, I'll give Fatty credit where credit is due. At least he does something nice for Alfie and sends him down to an exotic location, Havana, Cuba, to find a rum runner. So this is the place? Looks like kind of a dump. You'd think the biggest rum runner in Cuba would be operating out of somewhere more... refined. Things work differently down here. Not everybody is as flashy as Fatty Walsh. Yeah, that's right. Alfie's got a black suit on to symbolize his new black soul. So, Alfie's got a problem. He just can't walk into the rum runner's office because, well, that'd be weird, I guess. No, he has to find a nice, convoluted adventure game way of getting into the office. So, he talks to the lovely lady of the evening, who informs Alfie and Butch, that's the name of his friend here, that she knows how to get into the office, but first... They gotta get money from a dude. So, yeah, they do the adventure game thing, and then they get into the office where adventure awaits. Nah, there's just a dead body. Well, this don't look so good. What the hell happened here? Looks like our friend got himself a bad case of lead poisoning. And now it's Alfie and Butch's job to figure out how. And to do this, you gotta click on everything. No, I'm serious, like, that's how you deal with this part of the game. You investigate every interactable on the screen. And then, oh, hey, yeah, he's just behind the door the whole time. Who knew? Gentlemen, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but the Havana rum running trade is currently under new management. Oh, no, convincing voice actor man. What will our heroes ever do? There will be no deal with Walsh. That is final. Now, please, be on your way before I... Butch is my new favorite character in this game. I just shot the dude, that's awesome. I don't quite understand what that new rum runner thought was going to happen. But yeah, okay, Butch gets stuff done. But now our heroes have a problem. They have no rum and I guess Fatty will be mad at them. But hey, what a coinky dink. The little lady of the night, she's now running the rum trade and she'll totally cut these guys in. And also I think her and Butch have a thing. It's sweet. So... We still on for next week, Rosa? Wouldn't miss it for anything, handsome. Yeah, I guess Butch is getting his, as is Alfie. I mean, damn, Alfie, you're really changing. What? Boss wants to see you. Says it's important. Fine. Tell him I'll be up in a few minutes. <sighs> Who is that? Mrs. Grundy. Come to tell us the party's over. Oh, forget that noise. Just come back to bed. Afraid I can't. I'm not in the habit of ignoring orders from upstairs. So Alfie's become like a man. We missed all that character development, but yeah, he's like a hard ass now. Nah, man, he ain't he ain't white bread no more. This man's like toast or something. Croutons, maybe. Because he's like crunchy and tough, but you could... S Never mind that. Fatty's got a mission for our new made man here, and that's to find a still and blow it up. He's in the Florida Everglades now in a suit. That doesn't seem like the best choice of attire for walking through the swamp, but what do I know? Well, now, I ain't gonna ask too many questions, because you city folk don't bring nothing but trouble. But, I can tell you the surest way to find a moonshine runner is to follow the smoke. Or a series of puzzles. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you folks. This whole Swampland section is easily my least favorite part of the game. The puzzle design, it's not terrible, but it does seem a bit out of place. Like, you basically have to go from location to location, dig up boxes to find out where to go next. It just seems a bit... 
What's a good way of putting it? It's not as detailed as some of the rest of the puzzles in the game. But yeah, eventually, after doing this five times, you know, going back and forth, digging stuff up, you find the still. And then you have to blow it up, and no, you just can't shoot at it or plant a bomb. Now again, you have to use some adventure game logic and get something wet and block up the smokestack. I'm sure you're all very interested in it. So basically, this is what happens after everything is set and ready to be exploded. Oh no, not that guy. The dude who tried to rob the bank, it wasn't very good. Now he's a not very good moonshine maker. Man, this guy's life is pretty tragic sounding. Hey, don't go in there. Huh, what? Who's there? You got no business here. Get away before I pump you full of lead. Cut it out, you stupid chump. The place is gonna blow. Ah, get bent. You're gonna be sorry when I come back out here. No, you idiot. Cool guys walk away from explosions and tell their boss that they're over being a mobster. Oh yeah, sorry, I spilled the beans there. But apparently Alfie's a little bit upset having indirectly killed a man, so now he doesn't want to be a mobster anymore. Damn, Alfie, you just don't believe in job security anymore, do ya? Mobsters, real estate agents, what's the difference anyway? This ends tonight, fatty. I'll make you see reason one way or another. I might not get out of this alive, but I sure as hell can't keep living like this. So, Alfie is going to kill Fatty now. I'm serious, like, this man has changed before our eyes. He quit his job as a realtor and joined the mob and did some mob stuff for a while. Now, apparently, he doesn't like it anymore, so he's going to kill his boss. It's just, there's something to be said there, but I'm not sure what, other than Alfie's going through, like, a little rebellious phase, and he may have gotten in a little too far deep. Like, first, he just joined the mob to piss off Merrick because he didn't think Merrick loved him enough, and now he realizes that, well, being the mob means you're in the mob. You don't have to do some messed up stuff like kill a dude so yeah Alfie's not gonna kill a dude to leave the mob so it should work out well for him and as you can imagine in order to do this you're gonna have to do some adventure game stuff like figure out how to smuggle a gun into the party which conveniently looks almost exactly like the previous party except fatty's here so yeah Alfie basically gets a dude drunk slides a gun into the cake and then goes back to the party prepared to kill a man again after already having killed a man earlier in the day i mean two murders in one day i mean i guess once you bust that cherry you just go nuts boss big trouble the coppers are on their way someone tipped them off and they're coming to raid us wouldn't you just know it right during a winning streak too okay you know the drill flip the switches and clear everyone out party's over folks everybody kindly scram Oh, boss, there's just one more thing. Yeah? What the hell was that? He had it coming. Some of the guys up north felt he was getting too big for his britches. So I got the order to cut him down. So what happens to us now that Fatty's gone? Who's in charge, I mean? Kind of weird that you care that Fatty's been killed, Alfie, considering you were just about to kill him before Butch killed him. You're just so damn wishy-washy now. I don't even know you anymore. They'll send someone else from up north in the next couple of days. That's how this works. So much for loyalty. Don't give me that crap, Banks. You've been doing this long enough to know that it's all about knowing your place and doing what you're told. So that story about the police coming was just a distraction? Oh, no, no, they're coming all right. They need to find the body so this makes the news. Now, enough standing around. Butch, wait. Huh? You're just gonna leave? What am I supposed to do? Oh yeah, about that. The coppers are gonna need someone to pin this on. I'm sorry to say, you drew the short straw, kid. No hard feelings, huh? You know, I'd be lying if I said I was terribly surprised that Alfie's the fall guy. It just seems like how his mobster career would really end. Alfie's going to get a murder pinned on him unless he can escape the hotel room. And fortunately for Alfie, Fatty was apparently a big fan of having moving items around to unlock secret passages. I don't know who built all these secret passages. I figure he probably bribed some contractors or something. But anyway, Alfie moves around some bottles of liquor and somehow is able to escape the hotel room. Huzzah! Huzzah! And he meets a former friend from his past. Banks, over here. Easy there, fellas. Let this guy through. He's with me. Is what they're saying true? Fatty Walsh is dead? I think I'd prefer to plead the fifth on that one, Miss Douglas. 
It's not exactly a secret that you were working for him. Well, color me surprised, Miss News Lady. It's not like Alfie was broadcasting that to everyone he met from day one on the job. Maybe not, but I've realized it's time for another career change. Well, I'm afraid you're out of luck if you were planning on going back to Coral Gables. Our friend George Merrick got ousted from the city commission last June. Just as well, really, I was starting to get sick of writing all that bait and hook baloney. There's a new mayor, too. Dammers had some medical issue and went back up north. Is that so? Now I can understand that Alfie hasn't been paying attention because, well, he's a mobster now, but he still lives in the same city. You think he would know this already, but oh wait, wait, it's to inform us to play about what's been going on. I get it. In any case, the boom's over. It's all gone bust now. Fact is, the whole world is changing. Yes, I'm beginning to get that impression. So what's next for you? Aside from dodging the police, that is. I'm not sure, but I'll try and figure something out. Good night, Miss Douglas, and thanks. I guess I owe you one. Don't mention it. Good night, Mr. Banks, and good luck. Something tells me we're all going to be needing quite a lot of it very soon. Damn! The Great Depression hit just on time. I guess Alfie couldn't stop it. But I can stop this video because that does it for this chapter of A Golden Wake. And next time will be the final chapter. And I promise you, it won't take a month to put out. I've just been busy with something else. So yeah, have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Be on your way before I...